Hi, today we're going to be reading The Quarrel of the Monkey and the Crab. Long, long ago, one bright autumn day in Japan, it happened that a pink-faced monkey and a yellow crab were playing together along the bank of a river. As they were running about, the crab found a rice dumpling and the monkey a persimmon seed. The crab picked up the rice dumpling and showed it to the monkey, saying, Look, what a nice thing I found. Then the monkey held up his persimmon seed and said, I also have found something good. Look. Now though the monkey is always very fond of persimmon fruit, he had no use for the seed he had just found. The persimmon seed is as hard and uneatable as a stone. He therefore, in his greedy nature, felt very envious of the crab's nice dumpling, and he proposed an exchange. The crab naturally did not see why he should give up his prize for a hard stone-like seed, and would not consent to the monkey's proposition. Then the cunning monkey began to persuade the crab, saying, How unwise you are not to think of the future. Your rice dumpling can be eaten now and is certainly much bigger than my seed. But if you saw this seed in the ground, it will soon grow and become a great tree in a few years and bear an abundance of fine ripe persimmons year after year. If only I could show it to you, then with the yellow fruit hanging on its branches. Of course, if you don't believe me, I shall saw it myself, though I am sure later on you will be very sorry that you did not take my advice. The simple-minded crab could not resist the monkey's clever persuasion. He at last gave in and consented to the monkey's proposal, and the exchange was made. The greedy monkey soon gobbled up the dumpling, and with great reluctance gave up the persimmon seed to the crab. He would have liked to keep that too, but he was afraid of making the crab angry, and of being pinched by his sharp scissor-like claws. They then separated, the monkey going home to his forest trees and the crab to his stones along the riverside. As soon as the crab reached home, he put the persimmon seed in the ground, as the monkey had told him. In the following spring, the crab was delighted to see the shoot of a young tree push its way up through the ground. Each year it grew bigger till at last it blossomed one spring and in the following autumn bore some fine large persimmons. Among the broad smooth green leaves the fruit hung like golden balls and as they ripened they mellowed to a deep orange. It was the little crab's pleasure to go out day by day and sit in the sun, and put out his long eyes in the same way as a snail puts out its horn, and watch the persimmons ripening to perfection. How delicious they will be to eat, he said to himself. At last, one day, he knew the persimmons must be quite ripe, and he wanted very much to taste one. He made several attempts to climb the tree in the vain hope of reaching one of the beautiful persimmons hanging above him, but he failed each time, for a crab's legs are not made for climbing trees, but only for running along the ground and over stones, both of which he can do most cleverly. In his dilemma, he thought of his old playmate, the monkey who he knew could climb trees better than anyone else in the world. He determined to ask the monkey to help him and set out to find him, running 
crab fashion up the stony river bank, over the pathways, into the shadowy forest. Crab at last found the monkey taking an afternoon nap in his favorite pine tree, with his tail curled tight around a branch to prevent him from falling off in his dreams. He was soon wide awake, however, when he heard himself called and eagerly listening to what the crab had told him. When he heard that the seed which he had long ago exchanged for a rice dumpling had grown into a tree and was now bearing good fruit, he was delighted for he at once devised a cunning plan which would give him all the persimmons for himself. He consented to go with the crab to pick the fruit for him. When they both reached the spot, the monkey was astonished to see what a fine she had spring from the seed and with what a number of ripe persimmons the branches were loaded. He quickly climbed the tree and began to pluck and eat as fast as he could, one persimmon after another. Each time he chose the best and ripest he could find and went on eating till he could eat no more. Not one would he give to the poor hungry crab waiting below. And when he had finished, there was little but the hard unripe fruit left. You can imagine the feelings of the poor crab after waiting patiently for so long as he had done for the tree to grow and the fruit to ripen. When he saw the monkey devouring all the good persimmons, he was so disappointed that he ran round and round the tree, calling to the monkey to remember his promise. The monkey at first took no notice of the crab's complaints, but at last he picked out the hardest, greenest persimmon he could find and aimed it at the crab's head. The persimmon is as hard as stone when it is unripe. The monkey's missile struck home and the crab was sorely hurt by the blow. Again and again, as fast as he could pick them, the monkey pulled up. The monkey pulled off the hard persimmons and threw them at the defenseless crab till he dropped dead, covered with wounds all over his body. There he lay, a pitiful sight at the foot of the tree he had himself planted. When the wicked monkey saw that he had killed the crab, he ran away from the spot as fast as he could, in fear and trembling, like a coward as he was. Now the crab had a son who had been playing with a friend not far from the spot where this sad work had taken place. On the way home, he came across his father dead. In a most dreadful condition, his head was smashed and his shell broken in several pieces. And around his body lay the unripe persimmons which had done their deadly work. At this dreadful sight, the poor young crab sat down and wept. But when he had wept for some time, he told himself, that this crying would do no good. It was his duty to avenge his father's murder, and this he determined to do. He looked about for some clue which could lead him to discover the murderer. Looking up at the tree, he noticed that the best fruit had gone, and that all around lay bits of peel and numerous seeds strewn on the ground as well as the unripe persimmons which had evidently been thrown at his father. Then he understood that the monkey was the murderer, for he now remembered that his father had once told him the story of the rice dumpling and the persimmon seed. The young crab knew that monkeys liked persimmons above all other fruit and he felt sure that his greed for the coveted fruit had been the cause of the old crab's death. Alas, 